So today I'm going to introduce Juniper Adaptive Load Balancing Technology, which provides an optimized forwarding solution for elephant and mice flows in the modern data center. The traffic flows in data center roughly can be categorized as elephant flows and mice flows. The elephant flows are long-lived high bandwidth flows, such as data storage backup traffic, large file transfers. On the other hand, mice flows are short-lived bursts in nature with low bandwidth requirement but very sensitive to delays. Compared to mice flows, there are only a relatively small number of elephant flows, but they dominate the network resource, such as link bandwidth, buffers, squeezed and penalized latency-sensitive mice flows. In addition, the small number of elephant flows also badly skew the heading result, which result in the disproportional traffic distribution over the parallel links, such as ECMP or lag. You will see that in the demo before we apply the solution. So the solution for elephant and mice problem is adaptive load balancing with AFS technology. Well, the algorithm is complicated. The idea is simple. You slice the large elephant flows into smaller flowlet so they don't dominate the network resource. And flowlets are dynamically assigned to the link which is less utilized that is done in real time. And each flowlet is tracked on which path it's sent to to eliminate the potential packet reordering. So instead of assigning flows to a fixed small number of hashing tables, adaptive load balancing technology creates a huge indirect hashing table to drastically reduce the collision and distribute the flows more intelligent and efficiently. So now let's look at our lab demonstration to see it in action. So in our lab, we use a six-member virtual chassis fabric, a VCF, for the demonstrations. Four QFX5100 are used as a spine switch, and two QFX5100-48S are used as leaf switches. So we have traffic generator connected to two leaf uh, switches to simulate the host to generate elephant and mice flows. So since we have four spines, the traffic from each leaf is having a four-way equal path to another leaf. So the key is to see how we can better use that four parallel uplinks for optimized performance. So here is our sparent application window. So we have five huge elephant flows defined, and also we have 256 mice flows defined as well. And this is the console, connect to our VCF. We open another window uh, just to monitor the traffic rate. So remember from the previous topology, each leaf device has uh, four uplinks going to the four spawn device. So which means we're going to have uh, four VCP port, can uh, use any of the VCP port to forward the traffic from one leaf device to another. Now go back uh, to the console, and we check the version. So this is 14.1x53-d10. Uh, 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 this is the official release version. You can just download the software from Juno's uh, support set. And also we want to check the configurations. Uh, we can do show uh, forwarding options. The fabric load balancer features currently is in active state. So which means it's not being enabled. We go back to the sparent. Let's start the forced elephant flow. All right, uh, so the first flow start, we check the, the counters. So now you can see the traffic is using the second VCP port, uh, roughly 4.7 million packets per second. Now going back uh, to the sparent, and uh, we start the second flow. From the counter, you can see the second flow also using the second VCP port the same VCP port that the first flow is using. So this is what's caused by the static uh, hashing that unfortunately these two flows are hashed to the same uh, VCP port. So now we look at the uh, sparent, we start the third flow. So this time the traffic is using the first VCP port. We go back to the traffic generator, let's start the fourth one. And then on the fourth one you can see it's using the, the fourth uh, VCP port. So now we're going to start the, the fifth one. So all right. Uh, instead of using the remaining the third VCP port, which is uh, empty, which doesn't have any traffic running over that, the fifth flow actually is using the second VCP port. 
So this is a classical problem of the static hashing when you have very small number of the flows. So even you have the link available, even you have the bandwidth available, but they cannot be used. So now let's take a look if we enable that feature, what's going to happen? So we go back to the to the traffic generator. Let's just stop everything. We go back to the console. So we enable that feature. Then we do a commit. Uh, so now uh, let's just double check again from the configuration. Let's go back to the counter. The real time counter indicated there is no traffic running over the VCP link. Let's go back to the traffic generator. Let's start the uh, traffic again, just like we did last time. We start the uh, flow one. Let's traffic start. Uh, let's go back to the uh, to the counter. The counter shows the traffic is uh, using the first uh, VCP port. Let's go back to the traffic generator. Start the second flow. Now we check the counter again. Uh, now the the last VCP port has been used. So now we start the third one. Let's go back to the real-time counter on the VCF. The third traffic flows used another VCP port, which is not being used by previous two flows. This is a huge improvement of the previous uh, demo when we don't have that feature enabled. Uh, let's go start the, the first one. So ideally, this one should use the one VCP port, which doesn't have any traffic running on top of that. But let's just double check. Yes. As you can see, now the force flows is using the remaining VCP ports. So now what we're seeing here is that we have four flows that use four different VCP ports when the adaptive the load balancing feature is enabled. So remember, without that feature, three of the flows are using one VCP port. Now we want to do the second demo. So what I'm going to show next is how this feature works when both elephant flow and mice flows are in your network. This time we start the mice flow. The mice flow is started. Uh, so as you can see, when we have this mice flow start, it um, utilizes all four VCP link. So now what we want to show is uh, if I enable an elephant flow, then how the mice flows is going to be handled by this technology. So now let me start the uh, uh, elephant flow. So now when you look at the counters, uh, you can tell that elephant flows is used VCP, the third VCP port. You can see the traffic rate here. Right? The most interesting thing is uh, you look at the traffic rate on the other VCP port, you can see the traffic rate on the other VCP port is increased slightly. Right? So what it means, uh, uh, previously allocate mice flows on VCP port 3 is now being reallocated to rest of the VCP port that is less utilized. So this is great. So the last demonstration we want to show is that if I have the very large elephant flows, how that flows can be break out into smaller flow light and then can use the, uh, the bandwidth more efficiently across all available VCP ports. So we go back to the uh, console and uh, just uh, disable that uh, feature. Then we commit after the change. So the feature is being disabled. So now let me load another configuration file just to demonstrate the, uh, that feature. So now we load the configuration. Uh, let me just uh, start this. Start. Uh, the flow is already start. Let's check the counter. So now you can see uh, the flow is using the first VCP port. So now we're looking at uh, roughly 12 million packets per second. So without that feature, all packets are using the first VCP port. Uh, let me just enable that feature. So now we check the counter again. Ah. So now you can see uh, when the adaptive load balancer feature enabled, the packet within the same uh, flow being hashing out to use all four different VCP ports. Uh, this concludes our demonstration today. Thank you very much for your time. Hopefully this is useful to you. Thanks. Bye-bye.